so next uh, class I will request uh, like I promised a Comson engineer uh, who is also uh, teaching assistant for this course uh, to uh, show you how can you use a console multiphysics tool which is for simulating the sensors you know when uh, you are fabricating a sensor on an actuator you have to go for a clean room environment one thing second thing you have to use silicon wafers right you have to use several uh, technology available within the class 1000 class 10000 clean room environment right now when you fabricate the sensor uh, after fabrication you do not have to uh, you know you, you will test the sensor right, but it may not be uh, giving you the values or the properties of the sensor would not be uh, as per your uh, understanding and that is why before you fabricate the sensor you need to go for simulation. So, that you understand that uh, using this particular parameter uh, suppose a sensing layer what is the thickness heater how should to how should you uh, fabricate the heater what should be the width what should be the spacing between the uh, lines of the heater right uh, what should be the thickness of the insulating material in between how the temperature uh, uh, you know how the heater temperature would affect the sensing material if you apply a force on a piezo resistor sensor how much it will bend and how much is the change in resistance this everything you can first work on simulation soft uh, simulation tool and once you uh, get the data from the simulation tool you can go for the fabrication right. So, before fabrication the simulation becomes an extremely important uh, component when you talk about MEMS based sensors and actuators or in other terms any sensors and actuators right. So, uh, the lecture that will be uh, taken by Uttam uh, would be on uh, uh, understanding how can you uh, uh, use a uh, glucose sensors particularly interactions uh, with glucose sensor that will be first uh, lecture uh, using the uh, Comson multiphysics tool uh, and then uh, uh, we will be talking about other other lectures in subsequent classes. The other other uh, idea is to also ma make you understand how can you use the thermal actuators and resonators. Also I want to show it to you uh, how can you use the uh, heater as an a simple example for the uh, uh, so heater is some simple example of using Comson multiphysics as a simulation software right. So, le let us let us uh, see uh, how can you use say uh, glucose sensor uh, with Comson multiphysics and I uh, will I'll be talking about more about this particular sensor at a later stage of the uh, lecture. Till then you take care, have fun, bye. So, welcome to the course of uh, sensors and actuators. Today we are going to talk about how MEM simulation could be used for performing simulation. So, this is the agenda of what we are going to talk today. Uh, we will first try to understand why we are going to talk, uh, why we need simulation. Second is we will talk about what are the different kinds of simulation that we have in Comso Multiphysics. There are different kinds of uh, devices that can be modeled. Some of them as you can see on the uh, slide, you can see that we can model piezoelectric devices, we can model piezo resistive devices, we can model uh, actuators, we can model e which are uh, <coughs> having the exertion based on stresses or on uh, thermal. Then we have fluid structure interaction that could be modeled to uh, make some kind of actuators or pumps and then finally we have chemical sensors. So, all these different kinds of sensors and actuator devices can be modeled in COMSOL. But the first question that comes into the mind of a person who, who is asking uh, if they need simulation is not is why uh, simulation. There could be different reasons to uh, <coughs> move into a region where you want to do simulation. One of the reason is that you want to compare your experimental data with the simulation data. Why do you want to compare that? Because the comparison will help you to understand the underlying physics. Because once you know <coughs> what is the physics is, you can actually change the scope of working of your device and get to new different kind of results. So, that is one of the reason that is to compare your experimental data with the uh, simulation data and try to understand their physics. The second is to predict. To predict means uh, you have your operating scope for example, you have a thermal actuator and 
by giving a voltage of 1 volt to 5 volt, you are getting an actuation of uh, 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. But you have, you, uh, you do not know that if you give a 100 millivolt or if, if, sorry, if, if, if you give around 10 volts, uh, how much the actuation, actuation would be. In addition to it, you also do not know what would be the stresses developed within the uh, device and if it actually breaks or not. So, such kind of prediction where you are working out of the scope of your uh, input uh, source, uh, those th kind of prediction you can perform with a simulation tool. And then finally, you can create a methodology. What do we mean by it is that you can make your own mathematical model. Uh, in the end of the day, whatever simulation you are doing, whatever experimentals, uh, experiments you are performing, the main aim or the objective is to come up with a mathematical models. So, in COMSOL, you can, um, you can make your own mathematical models. So, these are the different common types of MEMS materials that are uh, available uh, uh, in the market. Uh, we have ferroelectric materials, we have ferromagnetic materials and then we have ferroelastic materials. Over here, uh, the property of all the three material properties are changed based upon the three different material property. The first is the electric dipole moment, the second is the magnetic dipole moment and the third is the stresses being developed within the, the, the um, material. So, based upon that you get different different response. So, if you see this uh, slide which talks about uh, on the left side we have input energy and on the right side we have output energy. So, if your input is uh, mechanical force or it could be uh, converting into stresses and you take the output as uh, magnetic energy, uh, that effect is known as magnetostriction. Similar to that if your input is mechanical, your output is electrical in order of like current, uh, it is known as piezoelectric or piezoresistive device. Then similarly, if your input is magnetic and your output is mechanical, you have magnetostrictive and if it is the output is thermal, you get magnetocaloric effect and if, if, if your output is electrical, you get magneto resistance. Then if your input is thermal, you might have heard about uh, shape memory uh, effect. So, this is an example of, uh, this is a classic example of stent that is a biomedical device that we use or we uh, introduce within the blood vessels. Uh, if uh, you know, if you read about it, you will know that uh, the stent that they uh, introduce within the blood vessels of the heart is first they actually push it from radially outwards towards the central axis uh, such, such that the radius of the stent reduces and once they introduce within the blood vessel, uh, it can actually come to its original position of the larger radius. So, this kind of simulation can be performed in COMSOL. Then we have pyroelectric effect and then finally, if your input is electrical and you, you want to get mechanical output, then you use piezoelectric there are, and then we have thermoelectric effect if you want to create the output as thermal. So, this is the uh, different kinds of physics that could be solved in COMSOL. We have electromagnetics, we have structural, uh, we have acoustics, uh, then we have fluid dynamics, then we have heat transfer and then finally, we have chemical. So, all these are individual physics, but no one is stopping you to com uh, couple two or more physics together. So, for example, you can couple electromagnetics and structural, electromagnetics and heat transfer. Uh, so, and, and there is no limitation on the number of physics coupling that you can have. You can also write your own equations using uh, the equation interface. Uh, you can optimize your design, so you can do uh, <coughs> shape optimization, you can do topology optimization, you can solve for inverse problems uh, over here and then you can also interface with other software such as MATLAB, uh, Excel uh, or uh, SOLIDWORKS, all of them can be actually interfaced with uh, COMSOL. So, all of this thing what we do is in model builder and one of my colleague in the demo will show that uh, how to actually make the complete model and from that model you can also create a very simplified app. Uh, this app is like a very simple interface which will help you to uh, come up with a very simple uh, user interface which will help you to change the parameters and see the results. 
So let us go with the MEMS modeling and we will talk about different different devices that could be modeled in COMSOL. The first one is the piezoelectric property. With piezoelectric property, we can have two types of sense, uh, two types of devices. One is the actuator, where your input is voltage and your output is dis displacement. That is, you give some kind of one or two volts, and you see uh, if you get a movement of your device uh, or a deformation of your device in order of micrometers or mm. Another type of devices that you can make with piezoelectric material is sensor. That is the opposite of what you see from the actuator. That is, your input is force that is it will create a, a stress within your material and the output is going to be voltage. This voltage could be in order of millivolts or uh, microvolts or in order of like few volts. One of the example of uh, piezoelectric device that you will see is a piezoelectric energy harvester. This uh, all the examples that I am going to talk about is as you can see in the bottom is available in the link in the bottom. Uh, if you just click on the link you will be directed to a web page and uh, once the page opens as you can see over here so this is an application library model so the all the models that we're going to talk today are a part of the application library uh, online as well as once we install comsol and over here if you if you download the application files so click on that you have an option of pdf so once you open the pdf you will see that it has a complete documentation that is uh, the complete theory part then it has the uh, explanation schematic in the case of piezoelectric energy harvester that will come in a minute uh, it talks about the results and the reference with which we compare the results with and then the step by step process to make the whole model. Okay. So, all the models that we are going to talk about today are already available in the internet. If you want to download the model, you can even download that particular model. Okay. Uh, for that, you need to actually uh, make your own uh, login account. Okay. You can also uh, search in the internet. For example, you can search for piezoelectric energy harvester console and you will be directed to that particular model. You can see the first link that opens is the piezoelectric energy harvester and you can download the application file, the model file uh, and you can start working on that particular project. The good part of these models which are already available is that you do not need to work from scratch. You can take this model, change the geometry and you can get the results. Okay. So, this example of piezoelectric energy harvester, so as you can see on the screen. Uh, it has a bimorph, so it is the two layers that are made up of piezoelectric material and the main application of piezoelectric energy harvester is for example in the shoes. So, people are uh, making the shoes where they can convert the vibration energy that comes when you walk into the electrical energy and store it into, into the battery. The same battery can be used for uh, powering your uh, watches or your mobile phones for example. Right. Uh, one more example is uh, the motor uh, or generator which is continuously vibrating. So, those vibrational energy goes for waste. So, what if this kind of devices we can actually put uh, onto such kind of uh, vi vibrating sources or motors such as motors and generators and th that could be converted into electrical energy. So, you can see over here we have the uh, two layers of piezoelectric material and this is the proof mass which is actually vibrating and this is the supporting structure. You can see based upon the different uh, loads how much what is the resonant frequency and um, the mechanical and the electrical output in, in, uh, energy that it the device is uh, giving. So, over here the input is mechanical energy and the output is the electrical voltage. Then we have surface acoustic wave gas sensor. So, over here uh, uh, what you see over here is uh, two uh, inter uh, digitated uh, electrodes IDE and on top of the IDE that you can see over here and here is the a uh, film of PIB that is polyisobutyl uh, which is deposited on the IDE and on the bottom we have the uh, silicon wafer. 
and based upon the uh, gas. So, uh, if you open this uh, documentation, so let me just open the model file uh, or the documentation. So, I will just saw gas sensor com. So, you just need to search over here like this and you can open that particular model. So, you can see this, this is the actual structure that has been modeled. So, this is the actual structure in 3D. However, uh, in COMSOL we try to understand if there could be a simplification of your complete geometry. Because in, in uh, simulation tool we actually mesh the geometry and it requires somewhat of time if you go for directly a 3D geometry. So, what we do over here is we to a, make a 2D cross section. So, you can see this is a small white surface that is what this is what is model in console. So, once you open the model you will get to know and this is the first ID and this is second ID and then finally, we apply periodic boundary condition on left and right. Okay. And based upon the gas which, uh, which I think is yeah. So, we have uh, I think it is DCM. So, DCM actually stands for dichlorine methyl I guess. Yeah, so, we wanted to understand how much is the gas getting ab adsorbed on this uh, PIB film and uh, if it is getting absorbed how the uh, density of the PIB film is changing and based upon the density the resonant peak of your device is actually changing. So, this kind of uh, simulation uh, is performed. So, you can see this is the gas uh, dichloromethane which is uh, modeled over here. Then we have bulk acoustic wave uh, composite resonator model. Uh, as you can see over here again this is a 3D structure, but what we model is uh, a cross section of it that is a 2D cross section and we also have a 3D example for this BOS sensor that is bulk acoustic wave. Over here also we get a frequency response uh, uh, resonant peak anti resonant peak and from that we can understand uh, uh, about the uh, boss resonator. Then we have piezoelectric shear actuator beam. In this case, you can see that there are two. Uh, two. Uh, so this is a composite material. What you have there is two different layers, uh, top and the bottom. And in the center that you see over here is the uh, piezoelectric material, and it is uh, having a foam on the left and the right hand side. Over here, what we give is an input as a voltage to this piezoelectric material and what you see is, is the output is the structural deformation of your uh, cantilever beam uh, which is fixed on this boundary and it is freely uh, moving on the uh, all the other uh, remaining boundaries. So, you can see that because of the polling direction uh, which is I think it is in uh, x direction that is uh, over here uh, on the right side uh, you will see that uh, the bending is on the top side. So, if you reverse the polariz polarization of the uh, on the piezoelectric material, you will see the bend towards the bottom side. So, it is actually working as a electrical actuator. Right. So, this model is also available in the uh, link that you can see in the bottom. Then the next type of devices is piezo resistive device, which means uh, the change in uh, resistance once you uh, apply a particular force. So, this is a linear uh, model that we have seen over here, but you can make more complex nonlinear devices from this kind of devices. Yeah. One of the example of the, uh, of the piezo resistive pressure sensor is uh, a diaphragm that you can see over here. So, let me just uh, open this uh, documentation. So, I just search for piezo resistive. So, I can just search from here or you can just go to uh, Comsol.com, and over here you can just go to model and application files, and over here you can just search for piezo resistive. Yeah, so you can see that uh, this example of piezo resistive, and over here you can just download this model file. And you will get to know the uh, the physics that we are solving for. So what we have over here is 
uh, diaphragm that you can see on the left side and uh, this part is zoomed on the right side. So, we have the N doped and P doped uh, silicon material uh, which works as a um, piezo register and we apply a particular voltage across it uh, to see what is the change in the resistance that is the output uh, current if we apply a force on this particular diaphragm. So, you can see the force that is applied uh, over here. So, this is the force that is applied and this is the stress that is developed on this film. So, you can see uh, how the stress is changing based upon the uh, force that we are applying and what the current is it changing. Then we have uh, electromechanical and thermal actuators. Uh, one of the example is capacitive pressure sensor. Uh, the capacitive pressure sensor is like very well known uh, sensor which is uh, mainly used in um, mobile phones uh, as a touch, touch screen um, <coughs> uh, uh, touch screen devices. Uh, then we have biased resonator, this is nothing but uh, electrostatically actuated cantilever beam and then we have uh, one more uh, cantilever beam uh, which requires the thermal energy to make it actuate because that is why it is known as thermal actuator. So, uh, let us just talk about uh, capacity pressure sensor example over here. So, I just go to console again and I just search for capacitive Yeah, so, you can see this example has uh, opened over here and if you just download the model file uh, documentation, yeah. So, this is the 3D structure that we have model in console. However, to re reduce the complexity of your uh, model, uh, what we have done, we have only modeled the quarter of the uh, complete structure. So, you can see this is the quarter structure that we have modeled and we have applied symmetrical boundary condition on left and on the right side. Okay. And then we apply the pressure on the top side. So, over here from top to bottom we apply the pressure uh, which actually gets distributed and there is a capacitor formed. So, you can see over here, if you see the next figure. So, you can see if this is it is a zoomed part of this cross section uh, in the center. So, uh, this is the air gap and uh, we have conductor on the top and the bottom and based upon the deformation that we give that that, that, uh, that we apply the force uh, with uh, it changes the distance between the these two conductors and based upon that the capacitance actually which is inversely proportional to the uh, distance between the two plates uh, changes. Right. So, you can see over here as you go on applying the pressure, the capacitance is non-linearly increasing. Okay. So, this is how uh, the we, you can model the capacitive pressure sensor models. Then we have biased resonators. So, this is also available in COMSOL, you can understand that. So, there are two different types of example, uh, one is stationary analysis, then we have pull in voltage. So, the amount of voltage that is required to uh, these two bend uh, the, uh, the cantilever beam uh, to bend a certain amount is a pull in voltage. Then we have a different example of uh, surface micro machine accelerator. This is an example uh, which talks about if you want to know the uh, velocity of or the acceleration of your particular device in such kind of application this accelerometer is used. Uh, we have for example, right now uh, pre uh, currently uh, we this accelerometer are used even in mobile phones and uh, in, in uh, aircrafts to understand at what accelerations are you moving on and if you want to play a, a particular game, uh, this kind of accelerometers are used. So, this is also is a model in Comso Multiphysics, you can see this uh, link over here. And then we have thermal actuators. So, I will just open this uh, example over here. So, I just go to my application library and then I will go to thermal actuator. I will just search for thermal actuator and you can see we get an example of thermal actuator, Joule heating uh, for a thermal actuator. So, 
So, this is the actual uh, thermal actuator that we are going to model, uh, we, we have the model way for. Uh, these are the two anchors that you can see over here that these are three anchors which uh, which are fixing the device. So, this part is actually fixed to the uh, particular substrate. However, this all the other uh, part are <coughs> susceptible for motion. So, this part can actually move. So, you can see there are two types of arm. One is thin arm and uh, this first two are thin arms and the third one is a very uh, large arm. So, as you can know, uh, if you allow the current to pass through smaller area uh, and those areas will be getting heated up right. So, the top two arms will be getting heated up more as compared to the bottom arm. So, it will actually once it is getting heated up this will actually get uh, thermally expanded the top two layers the, the top two arms and because of that the mo uh, this particular uh, device will actually move bottom or is move towards the bottom side right. So, because of thermal expansion you will see a, a particular actuation that is a movement towards the downward side ok. So, you need to give the material data like electrical uh, <coughs> you have the uh, mechanical and the thermal material properties of your uh, device and you get the results out of it. So, this is the results that you can see over here. Uh, you have the plot for the x coordinate versus the temperature data. So, along the x axis what is the uh, change in the in the uh, temperature. Yeah, this, one, this is one more example of thermal micro actuator. So, then there is an example of uh, fluid structure interaction that is uh, you have uh, different kinds of pump. Uh, the one object that you can see over here is the micro pump and this is a very specific type of a pump which allows you to pass through the, the flow only in one direction. So, you can see the direction over here it is from left to the top tank. So, there is a sump over here in the top which allows to save the water for some time and then it will it will after the second period. So, this is the first uh, the, the image is for the first cycle and on the next next cycle the uh, the, the amount of water that is uh, or uh, the amount of any liquid that is saved within the sump is then given through over here to the right side right. So, this is the a kind of a micro pump and you can see that there are structures which are actually getting bended right. So, these are the elastic structures that are getting bended and uh, we solve this uh, using the fluid structure interaction interfaces. Over here also you can see this is a structure which is, uh, is used to uh, obstruct the flow of the fluid over here and that is why you can see there is more pressure and we actually require a moving mesh ALE technique to actually model this kind of deformation. Because we start off with a particular mesh however, uh, as the time goes by uh, this structure bends. So, the mesh also needs to be uh, changed accordingly. So, these are the two examples uh, that has been modeled. One example is fluid structure interaction. So, you can just search over here fluid structure interaction. So, there are many examples of fluid structure interaction. Uh, we will talk about micro pump and this FSI. You can also see the animation of the fluid structure interaction that is over here. So, you can see that uh, when the flow has started it starts to bend and because of that there is a, a kind of a vortex that is developed below the uh, or after the structure ok. So, this uh, lines have been plotted with streamline plot and what you see is the pressure that it is developing over here. And this is the example of a very highly elastic material and how it is actually wiggling 
based upon the uh, forces that is applied to this particular structure. Then we have an example of uh, micro pump. Uh, so, let me just open the example model over here. So, this is the initial position of the can uh, this particular device that you can see over here this first device and second device and both are elastic material. So, they can actually bend based upon the forces that is applied on their uh, surface. And what we give is uh, an oscillating input uh, that is through the pumping mechanism and we allow the current to flow, uh, uh, we allow the flow to happen only in one particular direction right. So, you can go through this uh, documentation and this is the mesh you can see over here, this is the mesh that is modeled over here and uh, this is how you can see that the flow is happening towards the right side and over here also. Uh, the flow is actually getting accumulated within the structure. So, it is not moving to the right side okay. and with the time you can also uh, evaluate how much is the net pump the volume uh, with respect to the time that is. Then we have uh, the interaction of uh, piezoelectric transducers such as speakers or uh, uh, acoustic sensors such as microphone. So, this kind of thing could also be modeled. In this kind of cases, we have the uh, input as elect for example, uh, speakers as you can see on the right uh, top side, we have the input as the uh, voltage and the output is in term terms of acoustic radiations. So, you can also model such kind of applications in COMSOL uh, or you have microphone where your input is the acoustic vibration and uh, your output is the electrical signals right. So, if you want to uh, search for such kind of examples, you can just go to the application library over here and over here just search for piezoacoustic material. So, we will see some of the example of piezo, so this is an example of piezoacoustic transducer which converts the acoustical energy into electrical signals and this is a uh, uh, ton, uh, ton pills, uh, transducer which is used uh, in the oceans to understand or uh, to predict the uh, uh, any particular kind of a uh, uh, storm that is arriving through the ocean. So, this actually helps you to understand uh, vibrations in within the oceans. Then we have non-linear uh, microstrictive material. Uh, this is a uh, very uh, classic example of uh, the humming noise that we hear when we are near to the transformer. So, in that case uh, because of very high magnetic field the, uh, the, the ferrite material or the magnetic material uh, they actually uh, expand and also contract based upon the frequency of op operation and that is why we hear a particular kinds of humming noise uh, that comes through the transformer. Uh, those humming noise can also be modeled in COMSOL using the magnetostrictive material models that are available. And you can try to understand if you give different different uh, coil currents, how much the uh, magnetic structure material based upon the uh, the some material parameters is changing, right? So you can model such kind of applications also. Then we have chemical sensors such as glucose sensor over here. So this is a strip that you would have seen uh, if you have seen the device where you have to prick your finger and some blood will come out, come uh, out of it, and then you apply. It to it a to a strip and that strip will accumulate the blood to, to a, uh, a longer distance and it will change its color uh, and it will it will if you apply this uh, to uh, electronic devices uh, it will help you with the help of uh, electro uh, analysis uh, it will help you to understand uh, how much concentration of glucose is within that particular ml of blood so this is also model in comsol so, this requires the chemical uh, um, ex ex expertise. So, you need to understand uh, what is the chemical reactions that is happening, uh, which kind of oxidization is happening through this uh, strip uh, and all those things. So, you can see this uh, Michaelas Mantis uh, kinetics is actually being solved within this model. So, if you want to access to that model, just search over here as glucose sensor and you will see that particular example model over here as well as the link that we have given over here. So, if you just open the interface over here and you can see this 
PDF that is the model PDF and you can see this is the structure that we have made and the concentration of uh, the blood is applied over here. You can also see the results how the uh, concentration of ferrocyanide in this case is changing uh, for different different kinds of uh, glucose concentration. Okay. And this is also step by step process to make the complete model. Okay. So, what we uh, I would like to conclude with is if you go to Comsol, so if you just search for Comsol over here, uh, if you want this is the first time that you are seeing Comsol and you want to start learning about Comsol multiphysics, uh, what I will su suggest you, you is uh, you can just go to the bottom and there is something new that we have introduced uh, that is known as Comsol Learning Center. Uh, okay, so let me just search for it. Yeah, so it's over here, right? So this uh, is a very nice portal which can help you to get started with Comsol. If you want the trial license, you can reach out to the office. That is, you can go to the contact and uh, you can ask for the trial license. And if you want to so learn Comsol, you can just go to this learning center, and it has a very nice video platform which will help you to. Uh, get knowledge about many things. So, you can see this is the uh, introduction series. Uh, then we have uh, the physics that is you how to add different physics or multi physics. Then we ha this section talks about uh, the interface user interface of Comsol. Then the basics of mesh and then we also have geometry how to create 2D geometry, uh, 3D geometry, uh, how to create partitions uh, and then the study. So, there are different kinds of studies. So, how can you apply different kinds of studies like frequency domain study or time dependent study or stationary analysis and then finally, you have uh, uh, definitions. So, how can you give different different definitions in Comsol and then finally, how we can do the uh, post processing of your results. So, once you get the data, you also need to post process the result to get meaningful uh, uh, quantitative data from your analysis. Right. So, this is how you can post process the results and then uh, how to access materials. So, uh, you can or you can input the material. So, there are many different kinds of materials that you can give uh, which are also available in Comsol. But if you want to add your own material properties uh, that is not available in the library, uh, you can add your, those material properties also that you can learn from uh, this how can create your new materials, um, how to sweep the materials that is different different materials you can use on the same device and see how much is it changing. Uh, then finally, we have the application builder that is it talks about how to create very simple uh, apps from your complete models. right? So, once you open any of this uh, section over here, you will be directed to uh, a video that would be around 15 to 20 or half an hour video which will help you to get uh, accustomed to the particular that particular section. Uh, and this is the example uh, or all these mod uh, videos are like at your own pace. So, you can pause the video and then uh, try to uh, go to a previous video at any time and you can learn with your own pace. Okay. So, I hope uh, this introduction session would be helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to write us. Uh, we will definitely try to look uh, and answer to your all the questions. Uh, the next session would be also talking about the uh, demo on this particular Comsol multiphysics. It talks about the GUI that is the model builder, how to make. So, there is a step by step process to make the complete model. Uh, so, the first step is to make your own geometry. It could be a circle or a, uh, or a sphere or it could be a cube or anything like that. The next thing is to apply a material property on that particular geometry. The third is to apply physics uh, domain and boundary conditions of uh, on that particular geometry that you have made. And as Comsol is a FEM tool that is finite element method tool, uh, you have to break your complete geometry into small, small, small mesh elements. So, we solve at the node points of such mesh elements and we get the results. Right. So, that is the need that we need to do. Uh, we need to mesh the complete geometry and then finally, we apply a particular type of study that is a stationary study that is uh, for time t equal to infinity, uh, what is the working of your device. Uh, it is also known as steady state analysis. 
then we have frequency domain uh, 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 studies which talks about uh, if you give a harmonic input that is a frequency of a particular hertz you give it as an input um, how your uh, system is going to respond and then finally we have transient simulation that is a time dependent simulation where you can actually uh, know the transient effects which are more or less if you want to do a non-linear study we people go for transient simulation and then afterwards it is getting stabilized so those kind of things you can also model. Then we have Eigen mode analysis where which, which helps you to model uh, or, uh, or, or get to the uh, resonant frequencies or mode analysis to understand which mode of uh, uh, which mode are or could be existing in your device. So, such kind of applications could be modeled and then finally, in the bottom is the result node where you can post process the results. So, this would be discussed in detail uh, uh, on how to make the complete model step by step. Yeah, I hope this session was uh, will help you get started to use console. Thank you.